During the month of August, you were registered at the Seabreeze Hotel with a woman, not Mrs. Topper. Well, yes, and, and no. Mr. Topper, once again I ask you, who was the woman with you at the Seabreeze Hotel? Marion Kirby. Marion Kirby, Marion Kirby. I insist that you stop trying to make a mockery of this trial. Now he's yelling at me. Uh, kindly ask your questions in a milder tone. I'm sorry, Your Honor. You see? All right, I'll put it another way. Was there a woman with you at the Seabreeze Hotel on August 2nd? Yes. And no. Was there or wasn't there? Well, it's very hard to explain, but I could if you would only let me. Let him answer his own way. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, I'm afraid I can't tell you just exactly what happened because I don't know myself. It might make it everything a little clearer if I started with George and Marion Kirby. You see, it all began that day in June when George and Marion drove back home. George, look now! Something in my eye! Something in your eye? my hat. And I got a run in my stocking. I told you to slow up with you all know. Can I help it if a tire blows out? Besides, I had something in my eye. Couldn't have been your driving, could it? Hey, I've come around that curve much faster lots of times, so have you. But it was such a lovely car, too. Oh, George. Hmm? getting transparent. You're fading. Say, that's funny. I can see through you, too. Say, who's that? It's us. You know something, George? I think we're dead. I think you're right. I hope we go together, honey. So do I. Marion, what do you suppose is the conventional thing to do now? I don't know. We've never been conventional. I think we tell someone our good deeds, and then they open up the beautiful gates and let us through. Yes, but what good deeds have you done? Oh, doesn't. Name one. Well, I've, uh... Mm -hmm. I've, uh... Say, what good deeds have you done? Well, I... Yeah, at least we haven't done any bad ones, honey. You know, if we could do a good deed now, if we could... Oh, George, you're fading. Well, my trouble really began when I bought the Kirby car. That is, after it was fixed up, of course. My wife objected, so there was only one thing to do, and I did it. I ran away from home. It was a big car, and I wasn't used to driving such a powerful one. Naturally, I was somewhat nervous. Do you mind getting off my wife's lap? Who said that? Ali, Ali, I'll stand free. Stop it. My nerves are jumping off already. Where are 
are you? Hey, get off my foot. Who are you? Where are you? I'm in no mood for this sort of thing. Toppy doesn't know us. Toppy doesn't know us. Mrs. Kirby, may I present Mr. Topper? How do you do, Mr. Topper? How, uh, how, how, do, how do you do? And this is Mr. Kirby, Mr. Topper. How, how do you... George and Mary and Kirby, why... It can't be. It, it, it mustn't be. It... it is. Oh, dear, dear. Topper's fainted. Get some water, Marion. Water. Come on, Topper. Oh! Oh, that's fine. You're a great help. My hat. Oh, no, no. No, it can't be. It... No, 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 no. Uh, you don't mind, I'm going to get in my car and drive home. No, Topper. Sit down, Topper. You can't get in your car and drive home because you've got a flat tire. Besides, it isn't your car. It's ours. Well, uh, I'll, I'll walk. You can have the car. Mrs. Topper doesn't like the horrible thing anyway. Oh, George, did you uh, hear that? Well. Mrs. Topper doesn't like the car. Our good deed. Let's get to work on him. I'm afraid I don't understand it any more than you do. She, she called me her good deed or something. Do you suppose his accident could have affected his mind? No, dear. His past caught up with him. I request that the witness's testimony be stricken from the record on the ground that it's incredible. I object, Your Honor. My client has a right to his defense, regardless of his credibility. In my 32 years on the bench, I have never heard such a fantastic concoction of excuses, which the witness dares call a defense. Court is adjourned till 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. I'm gonna be awfully lonely without you, George. Gee, I, I wish you were here. Same old oak tree, remember? But it doesn't seem quite the same without you. <coughs> What's the matter, Atlas? <coughs> Where are you? Uh-oh. Come on up here. That's a boy. Don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. I'm the same as you are. I'm not here either. You feel kind of lost, don't you, Pop? I know how you feel, because I feel that way without George, too. Something made me come back. Maybe it was a hunch. I think something must have gone wrong. Maybe it was my good deed. Don't be afraid. Nothing can hurt you anymore. I'll take care of you, Pop. I better get this top of mummy. You wait over there under that tree. I'll get my dress all wet. Hurry up. Take a minute. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know where you are, George, but go away. Go away. Go away. Give me that paper. Oh. Oh, honey! Honey! Oh, honey, never mind the top. Let's get out of here. <laughs> is too nice a fellow to be in trouble. I'm going to get him out. And you're going to help me. Come on. Try hard. Oh, you can make it. It's a little hard at first, but you'll get used to it. And a boy. All right, boys. Take it easy. Take it easy. I don't care who you are. This divorce case is being tried privately and no visitors allowed. So come on, boys, break it up. But I'm a friend of Judge Wilson. That doesn't make any difference to me. Nobody gets in here. So come on, get going. Come on, please, break it up. Proceed. And now, Mrs. Topper, will you tell the court in your own words how Mr. Topper abused you? Why, he didn't know such thing. 
Cosmo never said an unkind word to me in his whole life. Look at him, poor lamb. How can you say such unkind things about him? Uh, Your Honor, I'm afraid my client is a little beside herself. Nervous strain and all. If you don't mind, I'd like to excuse her and call Mrs. Parkhurst to the stand. Yes, excuse me, Judge. You do solemnly swear that the testimony you may give in the cause now pending before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I certainly do. Now, Mrs. Parkhurst, you've been a friend to both parties in this case, have you not? I have been, yes. And is it your opinion that the defendant was ever cruel to his wife? He certainly was. Did he ever beat her? Of course. Now, would you please tell the court in your own way, Mrs. Parkhurst, just how Mr. Topper humiliated Mrs. Topper? Well... He was sullen and moody. He was discourteous and unfriendly. And very often so insulting to Mrs. Topper and myself and her other friends that we could hardly restrain ourselves. Sometimes he would remain away from home for days on end with the flimsy excuse that he was fishing or some such nonsense. And with a bank full of money, he hardly ever gave her a cent. It was a case of mental cruelty. He seemed to resent Mrs. Topper's social friends, such as myself, and on several occasions when I endeavoured to entertain Mrs. Topper in her own home, he would embarrass her by refusing to be present at the party. He even humiliated her by asking me to get out. Sometimes he would remain away from home for days on end with the flimsy excuse that he was. You see, Choppy, I knew you needed me, so here I am. Oh, well, this isn't going to happen again. Friend, it mustn't. Myself, and on several occasions when I endeavoured to entertain Mrs. Topper in her own home, he would embarrass her by refusing oh, to present Oh, Cosmo, her. darling. He humiliated her by oh. asking me to... Oh, her. Cosmo's fainted. Somebody do something. Oh, poor dear Cosmo. What happened? Marion, oh. oh. Marion? But I'm Clara, Cosmo. Oh, dear, now he's all mixed up again. Oh, Cosmo, please forgive me. It was all my fault. Order, Why did order. I ever leave you? Will someone please inform this court exactly what I'm supposed to be presiding over? Your Honor, this cheap trick is just another example of the way this man has trifled with the tender emotions of my client. Over and over again, he's taken advantage of her trusting nature. Toppy, you get up and sock that guy in the chin. Hey, I couldn't do a thing like that here. Yes, you can. Get up. Stop, Marion. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Sort of nervous affliction, Mark. Look out, you'll get hurt. I object. Order, order. I'm sorry, Your Honor, I can't help it. No judge would grant a decree in this case. Decree denied. Wait, wait a minute. Stop pushing me, Mary. Oh, dear. Oh, now that I've got my divorce from poor Cosmo, I feel so lonesome without him. But you didn't get your divorce, dear. Didn't I? Then what was all this commotion about? Oh, do I, do I have to divorce him all over again? Of course, Clara, but not oh. here. We'll go where your husband cannot interfere. You and I are going to France. I always get my divorces over there. Oh, Toppy, don't act like a scared rabbit. Stop running away from me. Can't you see I'm in trouble? You've just got to leave me alone. I've got to see that you're happy. Well, start making me happy by going away and never coming back. It isn't as easy as all that. Come here. Look, Toppy, we're both in trouble. And I'm not going to leave you till I see you safely back with Mrs. Topper. Your interference simply makes matters worse. Please go away. Can't you see how upset I am? Oh, I'll take care of that. What we need is a drink. And this looks like a place. I don't want a drink, and I wouldn't go to a place like this, especially with you. Not with me, go away. <laughs> nice weather we're having for Thursday, isn't it? Or, or do you like weather for Thursday? Oh, 
What are you staring at? Would you mind going out there and coming in again the way you did? Yes, I'll, I'll do it on my way out. You were at a circus or something? No, but I had an aunt with an elephant act once. Yeah, I, I know. What'll it be? Oh, I don't think I care for anything, thank you. You don't no. think you... Order a martini. A martini. Martini. Make it two. Make it two. You mean a double martini? No, no, I mean two. See, I like an extra olive. I'm very fond of olives. Mary, and for heaven's sake, don't let him see you drinking that martini. Oh, I won't let him see me. Yeah? Oh, yes, of course. Happy enough? Yes, well, I can manage this all right. You, you run along and mix some more. This drink's on me, mister. Will you do that again? Yeah, you, you run along and mix some more, will you? I seem to be getting thirsty. Mix a whole new batch of them. You all right, Charlie? I guess I'm a bit nervous. Uh, would you mind if I use your telephone? I, I'd like to call my house and find out where I am. Go right ahead. Man, you've got to be more careful. You'll get me into trouble. Why be bald? I mean, come away from that radio. What are people are going to think. You, too, can have a head of luxuriant hair. Just drop a line or phone. Marion, stop it, please. Oh, I guess I got the wrong number. That ain't a telephone anyhow. That's a mysterious control box for the radio over there. There's a new gadget just out, see? You dial your station here, and you hear it over there. Well, where are the wires? There ain't any wires. That's the trick, see? Now, if you want it loud, you dial loud, and that makes it loud. Now, if you want it soft, you dial loud. Yeah, it's soft. Anyhow, that telephone don't work. That's just for the trunk. If you want a phone, there's one over there. Yes, hello. Lady. Where did you come from? She, she's been waiting for me for some time. Uh, only she just got here. Well, anyhow, I'm glad there's really two of you. Well, Toppy, here's to you and my dog. Oh, don't tell me you've got that dog with you. Oh, Atlas is here. Atlas, take a deep breath. Try hard. Oh, come on, you can make it. What's that? There's a good dog. What is that? Now, 
Hey, how did he get in here? We don't allow dogs. He's a very sensitive dog. Yes, you'll hurt his feelings. You hurry up and mix us some more drinks, will you? Yes, and, and, and fix an olive for the dog, too. Come on, Toppy, and do Hey, Charlie. Charlie, are you there? Listen, Charlie, you'd better mix them drinks. I'm going out and back and, and lay down. I'm hot. Hasn't this place any ventilation, or is that bad gin? For the last time, this is the last time. Will you please go home? That's as soon as I get my house. Topper residence. Wilkins? Mr. Topper. I'm sorry, sir, but Mr. Topper is not at home. Oh. He says Mr. Topper isn't at home. Well, isn't he? Are you sure, Wilkins? I'm positive, sir. Oh, well, you know where he is? I haven't the slightest idea, sir. Just tell him to call me if you find out where, where, where I am. Yes, hmm? sir. Thank you, Wilkins. He says he just doesn't know where I am. Of course not, Topper, because you're here. Oh. Oh, well, in that case, I, I, I better tell Wilkins where I am so I can, in case I want to call him back. Hey, haven't you got any home? That's just what I'm trying to find out. Two more martinis. Two more. Two more. Then I'm going to lock up. Then he's going to lock up. Hello, Wilkins. Mr. Topper. I've just informed you, sir, Mr. Topper is not at home. He still insists I'm not there. <laughs> He's always right, you know. Good fellow, Wilkins. I don't know what he'd do without me. Well, look here, Wilkins. You, you tell Mr. Topper that I'm not at home either. Huh? Mm -hmm. Let me talk to him. Hello? Wilkins? This is a friend of Mr. Topper's. Well, if what you say is true, madam, Mr. Topper didn't waste much time. Mr. Topper wants to talk to Mrs. Topper. That won't be possible, madam. Mrs. Topper sailed for France with Mrs. Parkhurst four hours ago. Uh-huh. All right, thank you. Thank you for your trouble, Wilkins. I always had my suspicions about that, Mrs. Parkhurst. Poppy, you've got to go to Europe. No, listen to me and understand this clearly, Mary. There are some things you can make me do, but this time I'm going to put my foot down. I shall decide where I go. All right, all right. Have it your own way, as long as it's Europe. All right, as long as I have it my own way. Well, come on. We've got to catch a boat. Well, my passport's in the bank, and I can't get it till morning. Well, you're president of the bank, aren't you? Come on. Let's get started. You mean we're, we're both going to Europe? Sure, Toppy. Here's your hat. Go on to Europe with the ladies so I can get some sleep. Come on. Can't you open it? Yes, just as easy as one, two, three. Well, then open it. What's the combination? One, two, three. Yeah. See, I had to have an easy number so I could remember it in case I forgot. Uh -huh. uh, would you come inside, make yourself home? Yes. Yeah. Now, Atlas, you stay here and guard the door. What well, would I file my passport under this one? Why don't you have under T? T? What's that stand for? Copper. Oh, yeah. Funny he spells his name the same as mine. Huh? Mm -hmm. Can I see my passport picture? No. Oh, oh look, T stands for toy dog, too. Woof. Woof. Ah, ah, ah. Ah. Little fella, isn't he? What happened? When the door shut, the light goes out. One, two, three got us in. Well, that ought to be easy. Three, two, one ought to get us out. Give me the mat. Ouch! Now I can't see what I burned myself. Hey, man. 
Give him the tear gas. I thought that took so long, were you boys waiting to get in? Oh, hello, Eddie. Hello, Mr. Topper. Hello, Mr. Topper. Don't cry, boy. I'm only going away for a little while. I'll come back. Get away, Atlas. Get away. Stop pushing me, man. Baron and I understand perfectly. But uh, this Mrs. Stopper, is she going to be difficult? Difficult? Oh, why should she be? Why, I merely suggested coming here to France, and she trailed right along. Oh. <laughs> Tell me more about her. Is she pretty? Well, <laughs> she has scads of money. Hmm. <laughs> She's pretty. <laughs> then I'll be very happy to entertain Mrs. Stopper. <laughs> and now, Baron? If you're invited to the cocktail lounge, I'll buy you a drink. Oh, well, with pleasure, <laughs> monsieur. This is all very pleasant, but I'm still in a dither. You know, Nancy, I may have been too harsh with poor Cosmo. Clara, dear, don't you think we might find a more pleasant subject to discuss than your husband? Yes, Mrs. Topper, Mrs. Parkes is right. You must relax. You're on a holiday. You must forget about your unpleasant past. And from now on, I'll see that you enjoy life as it should be lived. Oh, Baron, what cute talk. <laughs> oh, my dear, don't you feel the feel of the Mediterranean, the beautiful water, the lovely sun? Doesn't that do something to you? Yes, the heat makes my feet hurt. Oh, Baron, Clara was only joking, weren't you, dear? <laughs> was I? Was I? Oh, oh yes, of course. <laughs> <clears throat> I think this is rather silly, don't you? Enough on the boat and on the plane, but this is going too far, Marion. Really. Now to top everything, you have to bring along a dog that isn't even here. Oh, okay. You just take that leash, whatever's on the end of it, and leave me alone. Why, Top? After all, I've done for you too. I appreciate all you've done for me, Marion, and I'd appreciate even more if you never did it again. Get in. Get in. Get in, Adam. Uh, I'll lock those down here, Susan. How much? Monsieur, j'ai pris deux passagers dans ma voiture. Vous et une dame. Je ne suis arrêté nulle part. Et madame a disparu. For heaven's sake, stop all this nonsense. Tell me what the fare is. Qu'est-ce qu'il y a avec vous? Monsieur a tué une femme. Appelez les gendarmes tout de suite. Mais vous ne savez pas ce que vous dites. Et ne criez pas comme ça, voyons. Stop making all this fuss and tell me how much I owe. Is anyone around here speak English? Yes. I, I am the manager of this hotel. Can I be of service? You just tell me what this idiot is yapping about, will you? Oui, monsieur. Que y a-t-il? Que se passe-t-il? Cet homme a tué une femme. He said that you have killed a woman. Is that any reason for making all this fuss? I came here alone, and here I am. Doesn't that prove it? I'm sorry, monsieur. Are you insane? But Be quiet. Insulting a guest of the saint Pierre. Here, take this and go. And don't ever come back again. And let that be a lesson to you. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> well, come on, let's go. Uh, take the gentleman's luggage. Who's all the luggage, the monsieur? Monsieur n'a pas de bagage. Ah, et c'est pas un gentleman non plus. Euh, Américain, pas. Bon. 
By yourself. I am so sorry, monsieur. I assure you it will never happen again. It will be my pleasure to make your stay at our hotel a pleasure. Yes. Bonjour, monsieur. I want some accommodation, please. Ah, I have a very lovely suite on the, uh, uh, on the fourth floor. Une vue magnifique sur l'océan et les montagnes. Des arbres, des fleurs, des oiseaux qui chantent et des petits papillons. Ah, je vous assure, mm. monsieur. Vous ça. Bien. <laughs> C'est le mari de Madame Topère. Impossible. Si, si. Regardez donc, c'est le même nom. I, I am very sorry, Mr. Topper, but my clerk now finds that you had no reservation and our rooms are all taken. Can't you find anything for me? But, monsieur, you would not like what we have. We have one little room, but, but it would not uh, suit a gentleman like you. Now, I suggest... Yes, so I'll take it. Uh, but, monsieur, uh, I, uh, I know you will not like it. Uh, won't you let me make arrangements for you some other place? I want to stay here. You see, I came to fetch my wife, Mrs. Topper. She's registered here, isn't she? Oh, oui. No, 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 I'm here because I, I want to surprise her. Oh, that would be impossible. <laughs> Mrs. Topper is in Italy <clears throat> with uh, Mrs. Uh, Parker's. And the Baron de Brionon. Oh, that's nice. Now, uh, may I see my room? Yeah, but I know you will not like it, monsieur. Please don't let's bicker anymore. Pierre. Pierre, voilà. Pierre, montrez à monsieur le 14B, the uh, 14B. Why? Why does the Osborne have to arrive at this time? To spoil everything for the Baron. Ah, quel chameau. Oui. I will get rid of him. The... The... Um... Pig. Toppy, you look like the thinker. Without a thought. You can think of the tiniest things to worry about, Toppy. Well, we're going to be nice and snug in this sweet little room. Just the three of us. What do you mean, the three of us? Well, what about me and Atlas? Oh, no, you can't do that to me again, Mary. After all, the only reason I'm over here at all is because you were found in my room once before. Topper, you're getting crabby. I know what's the matter with you. You're hungry. And I'm going to get you some food. Huh? Mary, put that phone down. Now, Topper, you need me. Would you like to have some chicken and potatoes and soup and things? But, Monsieur, I don't understand. Do you always eat two dinners? Yes, always. Of course I do. One on top of the other. You see, I eat the second one to keep myself company while I'm eating the first one. Look, see, I come here and I, I take a bite something there and I come over here and take a bite here and I go back there and so on and running back and forth gives me such an appetite that I naturally eat both dinners, you see? Naturally. <laughs> But, monsieur, you dropped something. No, 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 don't touch it, no. no. I always keep a bowl on the other side of the bed, so in case I wake up in the night and feel like gnawing on something, you see? Oh, look here, you, you go away. Will you go right away? You're making me so nervous. Get out of here, will you? Go on. Come on, Toppy. I'm starved. Found these people. Come here. You've got to do something quickly. I'm getting pretty tired of this. Come on, Atlas. Here we go again. What's your pain, Monsieur? No, don't worry. Come in. You wish two glasses, Monsieur? Yes, of course I do. One for, for each hand. Yes, well, no, never mind, that'll, that'll do. That'll be all right. Yes, that'll be all, absolutely all right. Simply got to control yourself. Or you're going to get me into the same trouble again that I'm in already, no? Come on, 
on, Toppy. Have a drink. All right, but immediately after dinner, you'll have to get out of here and, and take your confounded Atlas with you. Yes, I mean you. Atlas, stop it. Don't let Topper scare you. What are you, a watchdog or a mouse? Come on back. Ah! Don't you see? We've got to stay here. There's no place else we can go. All right, then I'll leave. Oh, no, you won't. Man, don't even want to touch that phone. Oh, no. Hello? Faites monter un autre lit un grand panier pour un chien, s'il vous plaît. Oui, merci. Now, what have you done? Oh, I've just ordered another bed and a large basket for the dog. A dog basket? I suppose I have to tell him that I sleep in a dog basket. Unable to cable Monet. Mrs. Topper's lawyers have attached entire estate. Am en route with bagage. Wilkins. Ah, excellent. He has no money. Now I can get rid of him. Ah. <laughs> Voila. Oh, Toppy, can't you cheer up? You look like a dried up old apricot. Nothing can make me happy. Oh, no? <laughs> I shall have to ask you to open the door. Well, go ahead, ask me. Well, open the door. Well, I don't mean. I see you have enjoyed yourself. I've never had so much fun all my life. I wish you could have been here. I'm glad you weren't, of course. You, of course, understand it is expected that we be paid for this. Well, I'm not complaining. Why should you? Qu'est-ce qui arrive là? Laissez passer. There they go again. You know, I haven't had a minute's peace since I've been here. Might be quieter if I moved into the lobby. Bring it in, boys. What? What is this? Never mind. Careful, boys, don't knock the bottle over. That's right. What does that mean, all that? I don't know anything. Ah! Did, did you order this bed and this basket? Of course I did. I like two beds and a basket. Oh! Mm -hmm. You like two beds and... Monsieur, I will give you until tomorrow morning. If you cannot pay for one week in advance, I shall not only be forced to eject you, but I shall also be forced to throw you out. I see. I threw him out tomorrow. Oh, this is dandy. Yes, now I will get thrown out. I wish you could get me out of trouble as easy as you can get me in. Toppy, don't worry. They won't throw you out of any place. Not with me along. I'd be in a fine fix as they did, wouldn't I? I've nowhere to go, and I can't afford to go there, anyhow. I know where we'll oh. go. To the casino. They have so much money there that they give it away. Come on. Laissez l'entre libre circuler ce taxi. Good evening. Good evening.
it. Let him figure it out for himself. How much money have we? About a hundred francs. How much is that? Not very much, but enough. Come on, we'll plunk it all on thirteen. No, 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 Mary, no. I never gambled in my life. Except once when I won a turkey in a church battle. But, Toppy, you're not gambling. They're the ones. You're a sure thing. If we can't beat this game with our eyes shut, we deserve to be broke. Come on. No, I don't know how to do it. Uh-oh. My mistake, number is 30. Ah. But I thought you said 27. I'm sorry, I was a little hasty. We pay off on the number 13, that is where these all stopped. Vous gagnez, monsieur. You win again, monsieur. Mary, this is dishonest. Would monsieur wish to examine the ball? They put it in. Let me out. Uh, I beg your pardon. Did you speak to me? Uh, yes, I did. Just a minute ago. Don't you remember? I said, uh, I said, good evening. Uh, yes, yes. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, manager! Uh, manager! Uh, what is the trouble? I don't know. This man has won three times straight. The ball keeps bouncing from one number to the other and always lands in 30. Hmm. Three times? Three times. Hmm. He cannot possibly win again on the same number. If he does, he'll break this bank. You just don't know what this ball has been doing. You spin it. I watch it. Tell Mr. Topper his time is up. Don't mince words with him. Either he pays you now one week in advance or out he goes. But now, voila. Laissez-moi faire. Here he comes now. Remember, do as I told you. Now look here, young man. I don't like my room. I want a suite. 
And I want it stocked with caviar. And I want the bathtub stocked with champagne, all the bathtubs. And I want it now, this very minute. Monsieur Topper, je regrette infiniment that we will have to eject you unless you pay one week in advance. One week, years, a month, a year's rent. And if I don't get better service, I'll, I'll buy the hotel and discharge everyone in it, starting with you. Eh? Oui, oui, monsieur. Uh, Excusez-moi. Uh, Pardon me, one moment. Guess I told them, eh, Marion? Huh? Come on, Marion, speak up. They won't be afraid of. Marion, where are you? Marion, Marion. Go away, I want to go to bed. Now that's gratitude for you. I went to a lot of trouble to get you the best suite in this hotel. Well, I thought they'd come around to my way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Well, follow me. Better get out of yourself. Someone might see us. Don't worry. I can. You don't have to push me, do you? I beg your pardon. Oh, I'm so sorry. I must have been talking to myself. You see, I, I thought I was someone I knew, and I guess I wasn't. Wait till you see this. This is something like it. Well, come in, so I can close the door. Just follow me, Tuppy. I wish you were here to help us. He'd know how to get us out of this mess. Well, this is more like it, isn't it? Huh? Oh. Mary, make yourself visible so we can both enjoy it. Right here, Tuffy. Now then, you stay here and I'll go in the adjoining room in Mrs. Parkhurst. That's fine, yes. Oh, what did you say? I said you stay here in Mrs. Topper's room where you belong and I'll go in Mrs. Parkhurst's room. Oh, no, really, that's going a bit too far, Miss. Now, Toppy, come back here. Huh? I went to a lot of trouble to get the key to this suite. Well, I know, but supposing Mrs. Topper came back and found us here. Will you stop worrying about Mrs. Topper? She's in Italy. Oh, all right. Might as well get into trouble in this room with any other, I suppose. I'll do it, but I won't like it. That's a good boy. Ah, home at last. <laughs> I feel as if we'd been away for several days. We have been away for several days. Oh, I guess that's the reason I feel that way. Welcome home. Welcome back, madame. Et monsieur le baron. How do you do? Did you have a nice trip? Oh, delightful. Rather early, isn't it? Uh, yes, madame. It's just past dawn. Yes, I know. We passed it as we drove in. Um, I shall give you a chance to rest. I shall call for you this afternoon. We are going bathing, aren't we? Oh, oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Goodbye, Baron. It was a most enjoyable trip. Oh, a most enjoyable trip. Mm, goodbye, my dear. Of course, you are my dearer dear. Mm, no, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> See you later. I'll just never get used to having him kiss my hand. It makes me go all funny inside. Uh, Monsieur Louis. Oh, mais quelle surprise, Monsieur Louis. Voilà Madame Topper qui vient d'arriver. Ah, Mrs. Parkhurst, welcome. Oh, Mrs. Topper, this is your home. Oh. It must always remain your home. Oh, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Topper, you have an unwelcome visitor in your home. Mr. Topper is here. Oh, my Cosmo, here? He is here, but if you do not want him to stay, out he goes. Oh, but I do want him to stay. That's impossible, Clara. You mustn't see him. It'll spoil everything. Oh, but I couldn't do that to poor Cosmo. Why, just think he's come all the way across the ocean to see me. Cosmo, my Cosmo. Then shall I tell him you are here? Oh, yes, yes. 
No, 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 not yet. I must have a facial and get my hair dressed. Just think, Cosmo is here. Oh, I wonder if I'll recognize him. My Cosmo. Clara, you're acting like a schoolgirl. Oh, do you really think so? Why, I've been out of school for years. Or people think I'm murdering you. Oh, school, school, Monsieur. Oh, school. Be, be quiet, or I'll, I'll. Oh, Cosmo. Oh, oh, hello, hello, Clara. Oh, Cosmo, how could you? And in my own room. Clara, you couldn't think that I. Oh, you take my gown right off and get out of here, you, you, you bad man, you. Clara. You take my gown off right now. I never thought you could stoop so low, and I. I was almost so glad to see you. <laughs> I can explain. I, I can explain. Yeah, we have our share, you know, me. Oh, if we need to speak, I'm a hammer. It's not that fault, you do, don't you? Oh, Nancy, never in my life have I been so humiliated. You've no idea how terrible it is to have faith in one, to have that one proof faithless to one. But Clara, what's happened? What's wrong? Oh, everything's wrong. I just saw Cosmo making love, Latin love, to that maid. He's a beast. He was beating her and tearing her clothes off. Oh, the pity of it. Mm. Well, may I see you for a moment? Alone? I don't want to see you ever again. Please get out. But, Clara... Uh, really, Mr. Topper, I think you could have put on some clothes before coming in here. Oh, Mrs. Parkhurst, if, even if I liked you, I'd, I'd stop talking to you. Please, Clara, I want to explain. Explanations aren't necessary. I just won't talk to you, no matter what. But you must. You know, I came all the way across the ocean. Did you have a pleasant trip? Well, it was a bit rough, you know. Please, Vera, won't you listen? She's listened to quite enough. Will you leave? Uh, oh, please, Vera. <laughs> oh, please get out. Get out, you nasty man. Get out. I finance your trip to Italy. I feed you. I clothe you. Three years now. And you come back with no money. I didn't have a chance. The lady will not be hurried. Oh, you have the best prospect America has sent us for years. You must have patience, Louis. I'm trying my very best. You mustn't forget the lady is slightly eccentric. I give you one more chance. While you're here, we must be running over to Saint-Tropez. You've never been there, no? Been there? I doubt if I can even say it. <laughs> you're so quaint and so lovely. But not so lovely as Saint-Tropez is at this time of the year. It is the ideal heaven for those who wish to be alone and who wish to enjoy the quiet evenings and the beach rushing against the sand and the sand rushing against the water. Well, isn't that exactly what happens here? Oh, yes, but not like at Saint-Tropez. Come on and sit down, Toppy. You're a dear. And I do hate to see you suffer. Oh, well, what's the use, man? There's nothing to be done about it. Mrs. Topper doesn't care for me anymore. I'm going back home. Oh, no, you're not. You can't do that. I'll fix that sand lizard. Watch me. Zip. Gee, I wish I could do that.
My trunks! My trunks! My trunks! Your trunks? What's the matter with them? Mrs. Topper? Well, I fixed him good. He won't chase you anymore. What did you do? I pulled his trunks off. His trunks? Yep. Well, come man, you must forget he's with my wife. Don't worry, he won't be with her long, not when I get through with him. Madam, I have a sense of humor, but these kind of a joke I do not comprehend. But, Your Majesty, I don't know anything about them. Mrs. Topper, haven't I always been a gentleman? Yes, I think so. How am I doing? with their toys. <coughs> I don't know why you keep on talking about your silly trunk. Hey, hey, get away. Get, are you crazy? No, 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 you understand? I have lost my trunks. Well, you can stay here if you want to, but I must be going. I have an appointment with a beauty parlor. I mustn't forget to call them and see if they can take me. do do Oh, please, madame, madame, do something. The tide is coming in and, and, and I'm going to drown. Oh, don't be silly, madam. It's only water. Hello. May I sit down? Please do. It's a lovely day to be lying in the sand, isn't it? Yes. You know, when I was a little girl, I just loved to lie in the sand all covered up like you are. <laughs> when I was a little boy, I didn't mind. But now it's most uncomfortable. Oh. Is this your little dog? Yes. Cute little thing, isn't it? You're an American. Yes. Uh, Daddy's in the steel business. <laughs> Would you do me a favor? Favor? Yes. Oh, I've had a terrific accident. Oh, isn't that too bad? I, I need a pair of trunks the worst way. Size 32. Trunks? Size 32. Trunks. Size 32. Well, I I'll see what I can do. Now, you won't go away, will you? Oh, no, mademoiselle. Mr. Topper, this is preposterous, if I may say so. And good afternoon, sir. Mm, hello, Wilkins. Well, what's preposterous? Well, a gentleman of your position, sir, in a room of this dimension. I shall complain to the management. Well, you, you don't understand, Wilkins. I, I, I like this room. It's exactly the kind of room I want. It's nice and cozy and everything is just where I can reach it. And people dropping in all the time. <laughs> oh, and yeah, you bought my dog. But surely you'd be more comfortable, sir, if they took out that extra bed. No, 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 I want that bed. You see, I'd like to have a spare bed. Then if I walk over there in my seat and lie down, I'm still in bed. It does seem a little odd, sir. But, of course, just as you wish. And uh, Mrs. Tupper, have you seen her? Well, yes. Well, that is, she's staying here in the same hotel. Oh. I think I understand, sir. Do you, Wilkins? Quite, sir. And how is Mrs. Tupper? I, I, I don't really know. You see, she won't talk to me. She refuses to talk to me. Oh, I'm very sorry, sir. Would you mind very much if I called on Mrs. Topper? Uh, just to pay my respects, sir. Oh, not at all, no. Oh, thank you, sir. I'll, I'll call her on right away. Psst. Mrs. Topper. That phone, that doesn't work, working. Mrs. Topper suite is number 47 at the end of the balcony. That way. Marion, you should be ashamed of yourself smoking in front of Wilkins. Well, anyway, I fixed it so that that Baron won't bother you anymore. You fixed it so that you wouldn't bother me anymore. Why, Toppy, if I weren't here to bother you, who'd you get? Uh, Wilkins brought my dog. What is the matter?
matter with the service in this hotel? I ordered two martinis 15 minutes ago. What? Well, the boy must be lost. Come in. No, never mind. No, here he is now. I beg your pardon. Uh, oh, do come in. I beg your pardon, madam, but I was expecting to find Mrs. Topper here. My name is Wilkins. So you're a friend of Mrs. Topper's? Well, I've known Mrs. Topper for several years, madam. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Wilkins? Won't you sit down? Mrs. Topper's dressing. Come in. Oh, do sit down. Thank you. Ah, how timely. Will you join me? Mrs. Topper will be ours dressing. I, I don't think I'd better, madam. I've, I've never taken a drink before in my life. Oh, now don't tell me you've gone through life without having one little drink. Oh, truly, I've never taken a drink. Oh, you're joking. <laughs> no, I'm not, really. Well, down the hatch. I beg your pardon? Down the hatch. Oh, yes, of course. I know that I've seen you somewhere before. Are you a foreigner? Well, that depends entirely upon what country one is in when the question is asked, madam. <laughs> you want Americans are so quaint. That's what Clara always says about the Baron. The Baron? Yes. The Baron is planning on being the future Mr. Topper. And, uh, modestly speaking, I have arranged the whole thing. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Topper's so thrilled. Uh, didn't you say that we had met before? I didn't say so, madam, no. But we have. Oh, I knew it. My memory is so poor, won't you refresh it? Uh, well, it was when I opened the door for you at Mrs. Topper's, madam. You opened the door for me at Mrs. Topper's? Oh, but surely I would have remembered that. There's nothing unusual about a butler opening a door. What? A butler. Butler? Uh, would you tell Mrs. Topper that I called, madam? Oh. Oh! Oh! Good day. Thank you for your trouble. Well, what are you waiting for? Well, I was just thinking what a strange world we live in. Now you're opening the door for me. Oh. Now then, Bobby, aren't you glad you came to my party? <laughs> I always enjoy being with you when you behave yourself. No, I don't wish you'd making me dizzier. You or the wine. Oh, you just say that because you're enjoying yourself. Oh, it is fun. I have reserved a lovely table for you. Je vous prie, madame. Je vous prie, madame. Isn't that a cute way to go? Too bad the people in America aren't French. You don't mind if I close my eyes, do you? I always close my eyes and I'm enjoying myself most. Make it last longer. Oh. Oh. There's your husband acting the fool. I don't know why I don't take you over my knees and spank you. Well, if you feel so brave, I don't see why you don't go over and punch that, that baron in the nose. I can't understand what's happened to Cosmo. He used to be so sedate and gentlemanly. Clara, will you please be sensible? Can't you see the man is crazy? I can punch anybody on the nose if I feel like it. And I feel like it. Good boy, Toppy. I'm right behind you. All right. Clara, what a beautiful name. Now, listen to me. 
You better stop running around after my wife and get out of here or I'm going to punch you in the nose. Cosmo, stop it. Oh. I'm insulted. My seconds will wear upon you tomorrow morning. No, if we're going to fight, we're going to fight now. I might not feel like fighting tomorrow morning. Cosmo. Cosmo. Ladies, it leaves me no alternative. I should go to him and offer him my sympathy. Yes, of course, my dear. And be sure and explain that you are not responsible for your husband's actions. Oh, aren't I? No, dear. Now go ahead and tell him how sorry you are. Oh, of course I'm sorry. But Cosmo looks so cute pummeling the van. Come in. Oh, so it's you. Yes, it's me. Come right in. Oh, Baron, I want you to know how terribly I feel about Cosmo beating you up the way he did. Ah, there you are, darling. Oh! Am I, uh, interrupting something? Are we in the wrong room? What does this mean? Yes. What does this mean? Who is this woman? Why am I here? Well, she's a very wealthy girl and, and lonesome. But I can explain everything. Oh, go ahead. Oh, well, that's all. Darling, don't tell me this is another of your flirtations. Flirtation? Yes, he's so impetuous. Sometimes he forgets he has a home. A home? A home? I find it very difficult to forgive him. He's all I have. You, you little shrimp, you. If I had believed you, I'd be broken-hearted now. But, but, Mrs. Tupper, uh, Miss... And now my... Where are you? What is the matter with the service in this hotel? I ordered a bottle of champagne half an hour ago. What? Well, it isn't here yet. Come in. Never mind. Here he is now. Come in. <gasps> You get right out? I'm sorry, madam, but I've got to see Mrs. Topper at once. It's very urgent. But in the first place, Mrs. Topper is not here. And in the second place, if she were here, she would not speak to you. I don't want to find you here when I come back. Well, 
Clara, what happened? What has that unspeakable husband of yours been up to now? It's not Mr. Topper this time. It's that awful Baron. The Baron? Yes, the Baron. All the time he's been trying to pay court to me, he's been married. And frankly, I don't think he's even a Baron. Not that I care, but I saw her with my own eyes wearing his pajamas. Well, she, uh, she might have been his sister. I've not met the Baron, but I think I'm safe in saying that she is not his sister. Oh, I thought I told you to leave. Oh, Wilkins, this is a surprise. Thank you very much, madam. May I have a word with you in private, please? Oh, of course, Wilkins. Under the present circumstances, Mrs. Topper couldn't possibly be interested in anything that you have to say to her. Oh, yes, I could. Come on, Wilkins, we'll speak privately. I'm sure Mrs. Parkhurst won't mind. Mr. Topper's in jail, madam. In jail? What for? Disturbing the peace, malicious destruction, and common drunkenness, madam. And they put him in jail for that? Well, we must do something about it. That's what I had in mind, madam, and I thought if you could advance me a little money, I would be able to make the necessary arrangements. Oh, well, of course, Wilkins. Clara, you don't know what you're doing. I know I don't, but Wilkins does. Ça arrive encore une fois, je vais parler à votre cabinet, mais mettez-vous en bord, à la porte, tout de suite, là. Qu'est-ce que c'est que ça? Hello, Toby. Guess who's on the other end of this? What a jail. This is like opening a box of candy. Man, you can't come rushing into somebody's cell like that. You'd ruin the reputation of the whole jail. Come on, Toppy. Fix yourself up. We're going to have a jail break. Oh, no, no. I don't want to go away from here. I'm just beginning to feel at home. Now, Toppy, you're not going to stand in my way. I've got Mrs. Topper all fixed up. You're not going to ruin my good deed. You're going back to her. I'm not at all sure that I want to go back to her. Let her come to me. I'll be right here. Oh, Toppy, you don't mean that. You know what we'll do? I'll open the back door and you sneak out in the alley while I take care of the guards. Mary, we can't do that. That's breaking jail. They lock you up for that, you know. Come on, we have to hurry. Now, while I'm taking care of things, you sneak up. Mary, you locked me out. Everybody out, everybody out. Come on, everybody out. Mary, <laughs> don't do that. Don't open all those cells. <laughs> Stop! 
Ah, now at last we can resume our little argument that you've started, now finish. I love arguments. Sing a man. This is no time to be cute. Which way did Mr. Topper go? Well, he, he went down the hall. Everything's going to be all right again, isn't it? I'm so sorry that I've been so silly. Clara, dear, you, you don't understand. You see, I'm in a sort of hurry, because all France is after me. Cosmo, look at your trousers. Uh -huh. Oh, there's been a moth or something chewing them. Sit right down here and I'll fix them. If you have a needle and thread... Clara, I can't possibly stop. I've got to get away. They're coming after oh, me now. Well, your friends will just have to wait. I can't have you running around looking like this. Darling. Clara, they're right at the door. Well, tell them you're not here. If you people have any complaint to make, go and see the manager. Well, open the door. Hello? Hello, operator? Operator, will you please tell the porter to get me two full fare tickets on the first plane leaving France? Don't forget Wilkins. Hmm? And don't forget Wilkins. Please hurry. My husband's a fugitive, you know, and we have to escape. <laughs> Come on, darling. Oh, darling, now that we're so happy, don't look so sad. George! Hey, George! Look at him! I had a tough time getting him together, but I did it! All by myself, too! Aren't you happy? Now I can come back to you! Hey! Wait a minute! I'm so happy, aren't we, darling? Yeah. Bless our happy home. Not only did most of the key actors return for the Topper sequel we just saw, most of the production team did as well, including the director, the writers, and special effects coordinator. Now, the director was Norman McLeod, who was not new to comedy at that time, having directed the Marx Brothers and W.C. Fields in the early 30s, and then later going on to direct Danny Kaye and Bob Hope in the 40s and 50s. And the man who did the special effects, Roy Seawright, received an Oscar nomination for his work on this movie, and this was the first year that special effects had their own category in the Academy Award process. By the way, there was a third Topper film, which came out in 1941, called Topper Returns, again with most of the same cast, but that time without Constance Bennett. In that version, Joan Blondell played a glamorous ghost. But up next, we have Connie Bennett back with Billy Burke and Alan Mowbray in another...